unsolved. John Bonet case, Randall DeWitt Simmons. Well, Mr. Simmons got himself arrested and he's serving 10 years in jail for child pornography charges, looking up images on the internet at some place. I want to say Burger King, but it's not Burger King, but some place that wasn't his house. And I guess he saved him on his computer. Randall Simmons was born on October 13th, 1952 in the state of Colorado. And he attended Littleton High School and he graduated from there in 1971. And then he became a journalist, a photojournalist. And he did that. And then he retired or gave that up and went into photography for himself in the Denver area. On March 19th, 1991, Randall got himself arrested. And after a few months, he pled guilty, I believe. And he was given a sentence of two years probation in 100 hours of UPS, whatever that is. But I know I wouldn't want to work for UPS. Now in the early 90s, Randall Simmons took photographs of Pam Griffin's daughter. And Pam was pleased with his work. And so she referred Patsy Ramsey to Randall Simmons. And so Patsy took John Bonet on June 5th, 1996 to Denver and they did a photo shoot there. And then they were scheduled for a half a day and it ended up going for a full day. And in the second half, they went out and did some location shots. And so that's the one with the little red riding hood photo and some other photos. In December of 1996, Randall was listed as living at 63260 County Road 35. So I'm going to show you that. So here's what it looks like. And took me a while to find it. And then let's back up a little bit and back up some more and back up some more and back up one more time. And you can see how far away that is from Boulder. It's a good long distance, but I guess he could have uh, drove there on Christmas day. <laughs> now after John Bonet's murder, a lot of people started questioning these children's beauty pageants and how young the kids are and how much they're made up with makeup and dress. So that's what this newspaper article addresses. And the article is about a California woman, after John Bonet's death, took her daughter to Denver to have Randy Simmons take some photos of her for beauty pageants. And so I think the article is kind of pointing out how obsessed some of these parents are about these beauty contests. Presented here, according to this article, on or about October 18, 1998, Randy Simmons was picked up for walking down the street, nude, naked. It was a small town, and he just did it the one time, but people can't seem to just let it go. There's really nothing that I can do to investigate Randy Simmons. 
I looked around on the internet for a sample of his handwriting and I couldn't find that. So there's really nothing you can do to accuse him or even put out any kind of theory that he's involved. And on top of that, I did find this. This is the um, acknowledgement that they did test his DNA to some DNA at the crime scene and apparently it wasn't a match and this took place in April 15th 1999 so looks like he's not involved well there's not much to go on for the case against Randy Simmons I don't even know if he's been to Boulder I don't even know if he knows where the Ramsey's house was located. I guess he could find that out. One thing I will say, way back when I first did some of these episodes on the John Bonet case, I did one about the author of the note, the profile, and he kind of does fit. He's age 44. As far as I know, he's fairly well educated. And so he could have written the ransom note, I guess. Oh, and another thing that sticks out to me now, that's why I like doing these videos because things kind of pop into your head when you do many of these videos. He would have had to drive, so he would have parked his car there somewhere. And so when the Ramses came home, they would have noticed the back alley if anybody was parked back there. So the intruder most likely didn't park in the back alley unless they did when the Ramses were asleep. So they must have parked on the street out front. And so you don't hear much about this case about cars. Anybody, it seems like that would have been the first thing the police would have asked the neighbors if they recognized or noticed a car that wasn't generally parked out front or in that area so just some thought there well this ends this episode of unsolved and i think next weekend i'm going to present a new clear overview of the crime for new viewers and myself to kind of restate what happened and then tomorrow night another episode of the zodiac killer case with a new suspect that ties into riverside and the san francisco bay area murders somebody that lived in riverside and either lived in the san francisco bay area or had a relative that lived there and we'll see what you think. So I'll see you the next time.